Hey, everybody. Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today's February 4th, edition number two, evening edition. Checking out the latest, looking at the infrared satellite imagery. It is snowing across many portions of eastern Oregon, eastern Washington, including Ritzville, Walla Walla. Spokane, Idaho Panhandle, Montana. You can see the system kicking through. It will be clearing as we go through the day tomorrow, but this surface is going to be with us until about at least Thursday morning, and this is going to be sliding towards the coastline, bringing an increase of precipitation as we go through the day tomorrow for western Oregon, Seattle, and then as we go through Thursday morning, some sticking snowfall potential as well. We'll take a look at the latest on that. We'll also take a look at the Arctic air mass likely to try to make another pass at us here as we go on in through the weekend and towards the early portion of next week now taking a look at the Doppler right now this is accumulating and sticking snowfall across portions of eastern Washington and eastern Oregon streaming up across the Idaho Panhandle western Montana big time snowfall months especially for the higher terrain and you see the more scattered nature of these showers across western Washington western Oregon as we speak so looking at the windy map you can see our complex surface low out here a lot of cold air aloft and you see it's kind of centered right here off the Washington Oregon coastline and you can see the offshore component we're leaking some of that cooler air back out of the east and we're drying things out and that's going to help with some evaporative cooling as we go through the day tomorrow for example check out the Fraser River outflow this is moving across the strait it's picking up moisture and it is depositing snowfall here on the north slopes of the Olympic Mountains so it pushes into the terrain there lifts cools and condenses and brings that snowfall one of the interesting microclimates here across the pacific northwest taking a look at the okanagan river gap as well north winds from a cold air conduit from the interior of british columbia purcell trench out there as well with the northeast winds purely in place here and moving down into oregon as we speak and then through the gorge now if you want to help support the channel click on the link down below to save 10 percent off you won't be sorry this weather station is very fun it's easy to set up great smartphone app ultrasonic anemometer highly recommended now looking at dew points across the region i want to kind of highlight up towards bellingham where they are in some single digits and again that very cold dry air is pouring out of the fraser river valley and back into the north slope of the olympic mountains here as well things have really cooled off let me bring up the observations there and we're just going to go to dew point throw that on there so that's the blue temperature you can see we've cooled things off into the 20s so that's going to help with some evaporative cooling as the precipitation starts at times over the next day or two if we go down towards portland you can see things 39 dew point 30 there's newberg at 34 hillsborough's at 32 freezing right now so yeah we are cooling things off a bit but we got more precipitation coming in here, and I'm going to show it the latest show, uh, the latest model show on that. Look at a Walla Walla Regional Airport. Check this out. I mean, you can see the runways are being coated there at the airport. It is snowing currently. And if we take a look up towards Hatton, there's Ritzville, Washington, I-90. It is snowing. You can see it in the streetlights out there as well. And in fact, if we move up on the I-90 corridor, let's go ahead and click this one and see what it shows. You can see the snowfall yeah, out there on I-90, at least sticking on portions of it. So be careful out there. The snow is sticking across eastern Washington. Now, looking at western Oregon, they have winter weather advisories up and winter storm warnings for the coastal range may impact the Wednesday morning commute. So heads up for this. It will be much more difficult to get this to accumulate in the lower elevations. But again, watch out on back roads. And there's a lot of hills out here across western Oregon. Again, know your elevation. Once you have a few hundred feet of elevation, you're much more likely to see accumulating snowfall. But yeah, there you have it. The winter weather advisory is out. It does include Woodland and Longview up into Washington. There's Battleground. There's Portland, Wilsonville, Salem, and Eugene right there. Now, looking at Seattle, nothing out right now that's likely to change as we go through the day tomorrow. The only thing really going on is a cold weather advisory for the cold northeast outflow winds coming across Bellingham and some of the San Juans. Additional snow through Wednesday. You're going to see the cutoff here across eastern Washington. Again, we saw the snow flying out there, and this is what more you can expect. Some of the heaviest still may be yet to come as we go through tonight for places like Spokane. And then you can see Idaho as you go east, look out past, big time snowfall amounts. Again, especially across the higher terrain. A lot of snow flying across eastern Oregon. This is Pendleton National Weather Service. You can see all the highways affected. And again, the higher terrain is just getting a lot of snowfall. So uh, this is good news uh, overall speaking. Just be careful out there. Now, looking across the Idaho Panel in western Montana, look at this. Missoula on the high end of things may get up over a foot of snowfall. Look at this, maybe half a foot on the low end. So plenty of snowfall incoming. Look at Helena between 4 and 10 inches as well. So yeah, plentiful snowfall still yet to go as we go through the day tomorrow.
Now, looking at the European, the hot off the presses European model, you can see this plume moving across as we go through tonight and tomorrow morning. Some showers start to ride back up into western Oregon, western Washington. As we go through tomorrow morning, be careful because if things are near freezing, it, of course, it does not take much. And it's showing some of the shower activity across western Washington early tomorrow morning. Same thing for western Oregon, especially as you go through the late morning hours. A bit of heavier precipitation across western Oregon. Some of the coastal areas and the coastal range getting some nice snowfall. Again, the lowest amounts are going to be for the lower elevations of the Willamette Valley here. Then as we go through tomorrow evening, you can see some of the stuff setting up here for western Washington. Interesting band setting up here across southern Puget Sound and some of central Puget Sound there. I'll show you what the GFS shows on that here in a moment as well. But you can kind of see that hanging on towards Thursday morning. Then finally that system is out of our hair. But then the next one comes flying up across Oregon, perhaps clipping southeast Washington and off into Idaho and Montana yet again. And then we have another system potentially Friday night into Saturday morning. We'll watch that one over here over the next couple of days. But... Again, I can't stress enough just how important it is. These temperatures are very marginal. And as we go through tonight and kind of see right there at freezing. So just watch these uh, morning showers coming through. They could be coating, especially some of the back roads. And again, some of the higher hills. Be careful for those treacherous conditions. And as we go through the day tomorrow, we get that diurnal warming. But then as we go through tomorrow night, you can see things drop back down towards freezing. It makes all the difference in the world if you're getting snow at 33 or 34 versus 31 or 32 because it'll start to stick more readily on the pavements out there. And you kind of see the marginal aspects here across some of the Willamette Valley as the snow is flying tomorrow. So in the heavier precipitation amounts, you're likely to bring that snow level further down towards the surface. But again, it is going to be quite marginal. And then we go on in through Thursday morning, again, kind of bouncing back and forth between 33 and 32 for Seattle. Yeah, oh, it's going to be so close, but some of the areas do show it dropping down into the upper 20s as well. So you've got to be really careful with this. There could be some significant snowfall with this setup here across the central and southern Puget Sound. I'll show you what the model is showing totals in a moment. But if we look at the European, check this out. I mean, if you're at 31 degrees and you get 1.5 for SeaTac, that's very disruptive. So call ahead if you're flying out really anywhere, Bellingham. Painfield, Seattle, Portland, anywhere you're going out of your across Pacific or this, check before you go because just the inch that it brought to SeaTac the other day caused huge amounts of delays and cancellations as well. So be ready for that. And this may not look like a big deal, but I'm telling you, two, three, four, five inches of snowfall, maybe some higher amounts near Carnation, just north of I-90 there off to the east of 405. If you get six plus inches of snow, that's a big deal. And a wider look at that same map, you can see the accumulations are going to be tough at times, but it does show a bit of accumulation into the Willamette Valley, which again can make things very slick and quite crazy. Now, if we look at the GFS, let's back that up here. So let's scroll through this and you can see the band moving across tonight and across eastern Washington, scrolling up towards Spokane as we go through tomorrow morning. So watch out for that. It's going to be slick out there for Spokane tomorrow morning. As we go through the day tomorrow, you can see the precipitation try to move in here to eastern Oregon, not having much luck sticking into much of the Willamette Valley and the GFS. But look as we go through tomorrow evening for some of the Puget Sound, that would be a disruptive snowfall. And this is accumulated positive snow depth change in inches. So a lot of times you'll see people post maps like this, the 10 to 1, and it looks a lot more, you know, sinister there. And if we look at total snow in Kachera, you can see, you know, you're talking about five inches for SeaTac. That would be a huge deal, but a more realistic look of way, uh, way of looking things here as a, as a snow depth change in inches, which would still be quite disruptive. You're looking at three inches across the Seattle Metro at 31 degrees would just absolutely gridlock much of the city. Now, looking at the GFS here, so we're scrolling through tonight. Uh, actually, this is tomorrow night. Let me back that up. Yeah, it didn't look right. So we see the band moving across as we go through tonight. Again, east. Showers start to move in tomorrow. Tough to get it to stick into some of the lower elevations, but the precipitation rates may be decent enough tomorrow to bring, again, some of that lower elevation snowfall. And if you're on some of the higher hills, much easier to get that accumulation. Then it starts to move up towards western Washington as we go through the afternoon. And again, some moderate amounts starting to show up on the GFS as well. So, yeah, fun stuff coming in here. You can still see the Arctic High just across British Columbia there. And then we scroll off in towards Friday night. There we go. And another system. We're going to bring another round of snowfall in here. We'll wait and see on that one. we got enough on our plate as it is. And we go through the extended forecast, tries to bring some more Arctic air here. The GFS wants to keep things a little bit further east, but I'll show you that here starting right now. Uh, looking at the European, this is 500 millibar heights. 
And this is about 18,000 feet up in the atmosphere. There is the system we've been dealing with, it seems like, for days now. And then we stay in kind of this cool flow. And then we've got this polar lobe that's trying to make a pass at us here. At hour 144, this is still a pretty chilly solution. And this, again, is the ensemble mean. So there's getting to be some confidence here in the next Arctic air mass trying to move down into British Columbia. Now, the European... Can you guys keep a secret here? Let's just take a look at the 12Z. We're just going to have a little bit of fun with this one, but try not to let this leave the video here. Don't tell your friends and neighbors about this, but take a look at what the 12Z showed. Just some kind of a fantasy forecast here. This polar lobe, that's a big time Arctic blast that would come down. You'd get a powerful Arctic front moving down the Puget Sound. You'd get some accumulating snowfall for that, and you'd get some really cold temperatures in the wake. So it's kind of been hinting at this a little bit here, but the ensemble mean is, again, not this strong, and it's too far out to really get too crazy with that. I just like to share some of these fantasy forecasts at times. It, it, that is just a fantasy forecast right now. And again, we'll stick with the ensembles for now. And again, when we look at those upper level heights, you can see the lower heights, cooler, more dense clouds, precipitation, colder weather versus and troughing versus warmer, less dense ridge on the flip side of that. So yeah, that's 500 millibars. Now looking at uh, the European, this is 5,000 feet. This does a nice job when you look at the temperature anomaly of showing the air mass, the Arctic air mass across British Columbia. This is where we are right now. And there's the 12Z European. Again, this is the ensemble mean. This is the 5,000 feet temperature average between all 50 ensemble members. So this forecast is pretty good. This is probably one of the most high confidence forecasts we have is the European ensemble mean. There's our surface low. It's kind of kicking through as we go through tomorrow night and on into Thursday morning. And again, we're kind of being this northwest cold flow. And there goes the next round of Arctic air. The 12Z again on the left. 18Z, uh, 18Z on the left, sorry, 12Z on the right. And again, you can kind of see both ensemble means as we go out towards <clears throat> the early portion of the next week, continue to have more Arctic air moving down into British Columbia. So this will be interesting to watch, something fun to watch here over the next few days, no doubt. You see not too much of a change between the ensemble members there. Now, if we take a look at the GFS ensemble, this is what we're dealing with now. There's our surface low. There's a cold air up across British Columbia that's leaked out into some of the Pacific Northwest. Put that into motion. There's our low kicking through on the day Thursday. Little tiny blurb right there, maybe on Friday. But then the next batch of Arctic air. And again, I mentioned that GFS keeps the bulk of that a little bit further east. But this is still pretty chilly air, and we're still caught up in that. So we would remain below normal, even according to the GFS. So we'll see which one ends up being right. And then as we scroll up in the GFS, you can see things are still pretty chilly as we go on in towards next week. So uh, yeah, probably a below normal pattern here as we go on in towards next week. Now, looking at the National Blend of Models, I want to show you this. So this is is for Wednesday morning, the lows out there. Again, be very careful. If you see any slick spots at all, any moisture on the ground, could be frozen tomorrow morning. We go through Thursday morning, 30, 28, maybe the upper 20s there for Portland. Or it's Friday morning. Look at that, pretty chilly out there. Some of the outlying areas down into the teens for Western Washington, even chillier east of the mountains as well. This is for Saturday morning, 29, 29 for Portland. 31 on Sunday. But then as we go to Monday, some of that Arctic air, again, maybe paying us a visit here. And you see the National Blend of Models also kind of showing that. Some teens back up here towards Southwest BC. And then we stay cool through probably the mid portion of next week at least. And we'll see how that goes over the next few days. Uh, channel's doing great. We're up to 94, 674. Uh, maybe we can get towards 100,000 here if we you know, get some pretty good snow over the next couple of days. We'll see how that goes. But I will do my normal briefings tomorrow. Um, yeah, we'll check everything out. We'll see if we get some snowfall tonight. I'll be Doppler radar watching here for the next 48 hours, probably nonstop. Um, but otherwise, I hope you guys are having a good night. Click like and subscribe. We will do this all again tomorrow morning. And I will talk to you guys then.